Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and let's talk a little bit about this printer right behind me. This is the Upbox Plus from Tier Time, and I've, I've had this for a while. It's just been in my queue to open up and review. I was able to get it out of the box the other day, and uh, I didn't do it live, and I didn't really film it to produce content because I just want to get it out there. Unboxing this machine went great. It was packed extremely well and the box was strong and sturdy. The packing on the inside was, was great as well. Lots of styrofoam to keep things in place. Once the printer was out of the box, I was able to put the filament on the side and the cover for it is actually, I believe it's magnetic and it just kind of goes on there. Once you do that, you feed it into the hot end and and then extrude some plastic. Then you initiate the auto leveling process and then supposedly you can print. That's what it took to unbox it and, and try to get it printing, but let me tell you my first impressions so far. First, I followed this, this quick start guide, but one of the things I noticed right off the bat was this. Notice your printer has been opened and QC'd. I talked to Preston over at Press Reset who also has a Box Plus from Up, and he did not have that. He did have to take off the zip ties in the printer. And that's interesting because in a review scenario, if two independent reviewers get different conditioned machines, it could mean that one is cherry picked. And if this has been QC'd, there is a possibility that this machine has been cherry picked. I'll talk to Tier Time and I'll find out what this was and what's different about mine and Preston's. Beyond that though, the quick start guide was handy and it led me through all the cool stuff in the printer's setup and initialization. The auto leveling procedure didn't seem to work very well. My first print just flew off the build plate. It turns out the nozzle isn't close enough to the build plate after an auto leveling procedure. I have to set an offset to 0.2 millimeters just to bring that nozzle close enough to print so it sticks to the build plate. Speaking of the build plate, this is one of them. You can tell this is perforated, and here's two that are not perforated. The holes in the build plate go over screws that are in the platform itself, and then you slide it to lock it in place. That way, when a print is done, all you have to do is take it off the screws and out. You can bend it a little bit and get the prints off. I'll show you. Just like that. With a perforated build plate, you do need to print with a raft, as you can see right here. It comes with a roll of ABS material, and the ABS, well, it prints extremely well. These are the pieces to a gumball machine that uh, my buddy Joe, the 3D maker noob, he showed off on his channel. I thought it'd be cool and my kids would like it, so I decided to start printing parts for that. Also, my usual test piece is this little guy. This is Kirby, right? This is the Chaos Cortec created little Kirby model. I sized it down 50% and I printed it in their ABS using their slicer. Let's close this. The machine is enclosed and the chamber does get hot from the build plate. It doesn't have a separate heater for the chamber, but with the build plate itself getting pretty hot for ABS prints, the chamber does retain a lot of the heat. It has a lid on the top that allows you access. The door up front here has magnets to kind of keep it shut. I'm really looking forward to using this machine and I'm looking forward to the prints it's gonna make. Let me know if there's anything specific you think I should try on this machine. I just kinda wanted to give you my first impressions of the process so far. I think this machine shows some promise. And if these parts for the gumball machine and this Kirby are any indication of future prints, I think I'm gonna be happy with what I see. Hey, give it a thumbs up if this is a machine you're interested in. Leave a comment down below if you have some suggestions for things I should print on this machine. A big huge thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com financially. Their help is greatly appreciated. And don't forget, last but not least, hug each other more often because I love you guys. As always, high five.